Gamer from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Section 1. Etymology. Section 2. Categories. Section 3. Psychology. Section 4. Types and Demographics. Section 5. Avatar. Section 6. Clans and Guilds. Section 7. Identity. A gamer is a person who plays interactive games, especially video games, tabletop role-playing games, and skill-based card games, and who plays for usually long periods of time. Some gamers are competitive, meaning that they compete in some games for money. In some countries, such as the UK and Australia, the term gaming can refer to legalised gambling, which can take both traditional and digital forms through online gambling. There are many different gamer communities around the world. Since the advent of the internet, many communities take the form of internet forums or YouTube or Twitch virtual communities, as well as in-person social clubs. Originally a hobby, it has evolved into a profession for some. In April 2020, researchers found that top gamers shared the same mental toughness as Olympian athletes. Section 1. Etymology the term gamer originally meant gambler and has been in use since at least 1422, when the town laws of Walsall, England, refer to, quote, any dice player, carder, tennis player, or unlawful gamer, end quote. However, this description has not been adopted in the United States, where it became associated with other pastimes. In the US, they made their appearance as war games. War games were originally created as a military and strategy tool. When Dungeons & Dragons was released, it was originally marketed as a war game, but later was described by its creators as a role-playing game. They too have called their players gamers, and this is where the word changed definition from someone who gambles to someone who plays board games and or video games. Section 2. Categories in the United States, as of 2018, 28% of gamers are under 18, 29% are 18 to 35, 20% are 36 to 49, and 23 are over 50 years old. In the UK, as of 2014, 29% are under 18, 32% are 18 to 35, and 39% are over 36 years old. According to Pew Research Centre, 49% of adults have played a video game at some point in their life, and those who have are more likely to let their children or future children play. Those who play video games regularly are split roughly equally between male and female, but men are more likely to call themselves a gamer. As of 2019, the average gamer is 33 years old. Section 2.1 Female Gamer slash Gamer Girl a female gamer, or gamer girl, or girl gamer, is any female who regularly engages in playing video games. According to a study conducted by the Entertainment Software Association in 2009, 40% of the game playing population is female, and women 18 or older comprise 34% of all gamers. Also, the percentage of women playing online has risen to 43%, up 4% from 2004. The same study shows that 48% of game purchases are female. According to a 2015 Pew survey, 6% of women in the United States identify as gamers, compared to 15% of men, and 48% of women and 50% of men play video games. Usage of the term girl gamer is controversial. Some critics have advocated use of the label as a reappropriated term, while others see it as non-descriptive or perpetuating the minority position of female gamers. Some critics of the term believe there is no singular definition of a female gamer, and that they are as diverse as any other group. However, it is generally understood that the term girl gamer implies that it is a girl who plays video games. Section 3 Psychology. Shigeru Miyamoto says that, quote, I think that first a game needs a sense of accomplishment, and that you have a sense that you are doing something, so that you get that sense of satisfaction of completing something. 
End quote. Gaming is a form of escapism. Hideo Kojima says that, quote, if the player isn't tricked into believing that the world is real, then there's no point in making the game. End quote. In April 2020, researchers found that top gamers shared the same mental toughness as Olympian athletes. Section 4. Types and Demographics Section 4.1. Sexes. Although roughly the same number of men and women play games, the stereotype of a gamer is one that is predominantly male. A justification sometimes given for this is that while many women occasionally play video games, they should not be considered true gamers, because they tend to play games that are more casual and require less skill than men. This stereotype is perpetuated by the fact that at a professional level, most of the teams competing are composed of men, while female gamers of moderate skill are rendered invisible. Section 4.2. Gamer. A gamer, or gay gamer, is a person within the group of people who identify themselves as LGBT and have an active interest in video games. This demographic has been the subject of two large surveys, one in 2006, which noted the level of prejudice that gamers endure, and another in 2009, focusing on the content that gamers expect in video games. The gamer community provides a safe place for LGBT gamers, apart from the isolation that they feel from both the heteronormative gaming community and the gay community. They also believe that as homosexuality in video games increases, that there will be an increased normalization of homosexuality in general. Quote, gamers are the future of video games, said Hamad Hosseini, who is married to Mahabua in Valve's gaming convention. Section 4.3. Dedication Spectrum. It is common for games media, games industry analysts, and academics to divide gamers into broad behavioural categories. These categories are sometimes separated by level of dedication to gaming, sometimes by primary type of game played, and sometimes by a combination of those and other factors. There is no general consensus on the definitions or name of these categories, though many attempts have been made to formalise them. An overview of these attempts and their common elements follows. Newbie. Commonly shortened to noob, or new, a slang term for novice or newcomer to a certain game or to gaming in general. Casual gamer. The term is often used for gamers who primarily play casual games, but can also refer to gamers who play less frequently than other gamers. Casual gamers may play games designed for ease of gameplay, or play more involved games in short sessions or at a lower pace than hardcore gamers. The types of games that casual gamers play vary, and they are less likely to own a dedicated video game console. Notable examples of casual games include The Sims and Nintendogs. Casual gamer demographics vary greatly from those of other video gamers, as the typical casual gamer is older and more predominantly female. Fitness gamers, who play motion-based exercise games, are also seen as casual gamers. Core gamer also, mid-core, a player with a wider range of interests than a casual gamer, and is more likely to enthusiastically play different types of games, but without the amount of time and sense of competition of a hardcore gamer. The mid-core gamer enjoys games but may not finish every game they buy and is a target consumer. Former Nintendo president Satoru Iwata stated that they designed the Wii U to cater to core gamers, who are in between the casual and hardcore categories. A number of theories have been presented regarding the rise in popularity of mid-core games. James Hursthouse, the founder of Roadhouse Interactive, credits the evolution of devices towards tablets and touchscreen interfaces, whereas John Radoff of Disruptor Beam compares the emergence of mid-core games to similar increases in media sophistication that have occurred in media such as television. Hardcore Gamer Ernest Adams and Scott Kim have proposed classification metrics to distinguish hardcore gamers from casual gamers, emphasising action, competition, complexity, 
gaming communities and staying abreast of developments in hardware and software. Others have attempted to draw the distinction based primarily on which platform a gamer prefers, or to decry the entire concept of delineating casual from hardcore as divisive and vague. Section 4.4 Professional Gamer Professional gamers generally play video games for prize money or salaries. Usually, such individuals deeply study the game in order to master it and usually to play in competitions like esports. A pro gamer may also be another type of gamer, such as a hardcore gamer, if he or she meets the additional criteria for that gamer type. In countries of Asia, particularly South Korea and China, professional gamers and teams are sponsored by large companies and can earn more than 100,000 US dollars a year. In 2006, Major League Gaming contracted several Halo 2 players, including Tom T Squared Taylor and members of Team Final Boss, with 250,000 US dollar yearly deals. Many professional gamers find that competitions are able to provide a substantial amount of money to support themselves. However, oftentimes, these popular gamers can locate even more lucrative options. One such option is found through online live streaming of their games. These gamers who take time out of their lives to stream, make money from the stream, usually through sponsorships with large companies looking for a new audience, or donations from their fans just trying to support their favourite streamer. Live streaming often occurs through websites such as Twitch, Hitbox, Mixer, and YouTube. Professional gamers, with particularly large followings, can often bring their fan bases to watch them play on live streams. An example of this is shown through retired professional League of Legends player Wei Han Do, also known as Cao Mei. Han Dong had decided to retire from esports due to his ability to acquire substantially higher pay through live streaming. His yearly salary through the Battle Flag TV live streaming service increased his pay to roughly $800,000 yearly. Live streaming can be seen by many as a true lucrative way for professional gamers to make money in a way that can also lessen the pressure in the competitive scene. Section 4.5 Retro Gamer A retro gamer is a gamer who prefers to play, and often enough collect, retro games, older video games and arcade hardware. They may also be called classic gamers or old school gamers, which are terms that are more prevalent in the United States. The games are played on the original hardware or on modern hardware via emulation or on modern hardware via ports or compilations though those in the hobby tend to prefer original hardware and emulation. Section 4.6 Classification in Taxonomies A number of taxonomies has been proposed which classify gamer types and the aspects they value in games. The Bartle Taxonomy of Player Types classifies gamers according to their preferred activities within the game. Achievers who like to gain points and overall succeed within the game parameters, collecting all rewards and get badges. Explorers, who like to discover all areas within the game, including hidden areas and glitches, and expose all game mechanics. Socializers, who prefer to play games for the social aspect rather than the actual game itself. Beaters, who thrive on competition with other players. Completionists, who are the combination of Achiever and Explorer types. They complete every aspect of the game, main story, side quest, achievements, while finding every secret within it. The MDA framework describes various aspects of the game regarding the basic rules and actions, mechanics, how they build up during game to develop the gameplay, dynamics, and what emotional response they convey to the player, aesthetics. The described aesthetics are further classified as sensation, Fantasy, Narrative, Challenge, Fellowship, Discovery, Expression, and Submission. Jesse Shell extends his classification with Anticipation, Schadenfreude, Gift Giving, Humor, Possibility, Pride, Purification, Surprise, Thrill, Perseverance, and Wonder. 
and proposes a number of generalizations of differences between how males and females play. Section 5. Avatar. Creating an avatar sets the stage of a player becoming an avatar. It is the first interaction that a potential player must make to identify themselves among a gaming community. An avatar, username, game name, alias, gamer tag, screen name, or handle is a name, usually a pseudonym, adopted by a video gamer, used as a main preferred identification to the gaming community. Usage of usernames is often most prevalent in games with online multiplayer support or at esports conventions. While some well-known gamers only go by their online handle, a number have adopted to using their handle within their real name, typically presented as a middle name, such as Tyler Ninja Blevins or J Sinatra Watt. Similarly, a clan tag is a prefix or suffix added to a name to identify the gamer is in a clan. Clans are generally a group of gamers who play together as a team against other clans. They are most commonly found in online multiplayer games, in which one team can face off against another. Clans can also be formed to create loosely based affiliations, perhaps by being all fans of the same game, or merely gamers who have close personal ties to one another. A team tag is a prefix or suffix added to a name to identify that the gamer is in a team. Teams are generally subdivisions within the same clan and are regarded within gaming circuits as being a purely competitive affiliation. These gamers are usually in an online league such as the Cyber Athlete Amateur League and their parent company the Cyber Athlete Professional League, where all grouped players are labelled as teams and not clans. Section 6. Clans and Guilds A clan, squad, or guild is a group of players that form, usually under an informal leader or administrator. Clans are often formed by gamers with similar interests. Many clans or guilds form to connect an offline community that might otherwise be isolated due to geographic, cultural or physical barriers. Some clans are composed of professional gamers who enter competitive tournaments for cash or other prizes. Most, however, are simply groups of like-minded players that band together for a mutual purpose. For example, a gaming-related interest or social group. Section 7. Identity. The identity of being a gamer is partly self-determination and partly performativity of characteristics society expects a gamer to embody. These expectations include not only a high level of dedication to playing games, but also preferences for certain types of games, as well as an interest in game-related paraphernalia like clothing and comic books. According to Graham Kirkpatrick, the true gamer is concerned with first and foremost gameplay. Escapist founder Alexander Macris says a gamer is an enthusiast with greater dedication than just playing them. Similar in connotation to cinemaphile, people who play may not identify as gamers because they don't feel they play enough to qualify. Social stigma against games has influenced some women and minorities to distance themselves from the term gamer, even though they may play regularly. Notably, during the Gamergate controversy that began in August 2014, the gaming press responded to anger from gamers with numerous articles calling the gamer identity dead due to changing demographic shifts, despite continuing to use the term to attract advertisers. Section 7.1 Games are stereotypically associated with young males, but the diversity of the audience has been steadily increasing over time. This stereotype exists even among a majority of women who play video games regularly. Among players using the same category of device, such as consoles and phones, patterns of play are largely the same between men and women. Diversity is driven in part by new hardware platforms. Expansion of the audience was catalyzed by Nintendo's efforts to reach new demographics. Market penetration of smartphones with gaming capabilities further expanded the audience, since in contrast to consoles or high-end PCs, 
Mobile phone gaming requires only devices that non-gamers are likely to already own. While 48% of women in the United States report having played a video game, only 6% identify as gamers, compared to 15% of men who identify as gamers. This rises to 9% amongst women aged 18 to 29, compared to 33% of men in that same age group. Half of female PC gamers in the US consider themselves to be core or hardcore gamers. Connotations of gamer with sexism on the fringe of gaming culture have caused women to be less willing to adopt the label. Racial minorities responding to a Pew research were more likely to describe themselves as gamers, with 19% of Hispanics identifying as gamers, compared to 11% of African Americans and 7% of whites. The competitive fighting scene is noted as particularly racially diverse and tolerant. This is attributed to its origin in arcade, where competitors met face to face and the barrier to entry was merely a quarter. Only 4% of those aged 50 and over identified as gamers. Section 7.2 Casualization Casualization is a trend in video games towards simpler genres, appealing to larger audiences, especially women or the elderly. Some developers, hoping to attract a broader audience, simplify or remove aspects of gameplay in established games and franchises. Compared to seminal titles like Doom, more recent mass-market action games, like the Call of Duty franchise, are less sensitive to player choice or skill, approaching the status of interactive movies. The trend towards casual games is decried by some self-identified gamers who emphasise gameplay, meaning the activities that one undertakes in a game. According to Brendan Coe, these are inherently masculine activities such as fighting and exerting dominance. He further says that games women prefer are more passive experiences, and male gamers deride the lack of interactivity in these games because of this association with femininity. Belying these trends, games including The Sims or Minecraft have some of the largest audiences in the industry while also being very complex. According to Joost van Drunen of Super Data Research, girls who play Minecraft are, quote, just as hardcore as the next guy over who plays Counter-Strike, end quote. Drunen says being in control of a game's environment appeals equally to boys and girls. Lay Alexander argued that appealing to women does not necessarily entail reduced difficulty or complexity. There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 unported license, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.